This is Whiskey Whereabouts, I'm Tim, and today we're gonna to be tasting this year, the 2023's committee release from Ardbeg, the Heavy Vapors. Are these releases overhyped? Is the backlash swung too far the other way? We're gonna get into it right now. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here, with you, on Whiskey Whereabouts. So if you're not familiar, every year Ardbeg has a limited release, the committee release bottlings, and there's some things that are different about the process, uh, usually with these bottles, uh, that sets them apart. You might call it a gimmick. And uh, they've been doing this for a while. Uh, the bottles are not inexpensive. There is sort of a feeling that they are a little sort of overpriced and don't always sort of justify the price on them. This bottle cost, I know, $156, which is right about what these are sort of expected to cost, but I didn't buy this bottle. It was a gift. Um, it was It's from somebody I know, who, uh, but uh, is also a big supporter of the channel. So thanks to Gary for providing this bottle for us to sort of unpack um, today. This year, they have released this whiskey, which is the product of a sort of experiment. At Ardbeg, they have something called a purifier installed in the line arm. The line arm connects the still to the condenser. Remember, the still is like a big boiler, so you have a lot of vapor coming off it. It travels along this line arm, and it hits the condenser. And so in the line arm, it must pass through or over a purifier. And this purifier is designed to effectively block some of the heavier vapors, the heavier sort of compounds, so they don't get through to the condenser, they present up getting condensed and rerouted back down into the still so they can try to go through the process all over again. And it is only on one of the two stills at Ardbeg, one of the few distilleries using a purifier. And so for an experiment, they have run this batch, the spirit that went into this bottling, without that purifier. So if you look at any of the marketing material associated with this bottling, which is elaborate, they will talk constantly about the balance achieved by this purifier and how important it is. And so now we have a bottling that shows us what would happen if Ardbeg didn't have this purifier. What, what would be the difference? Speaking of that spirit, when I opened this bottle one week ago, poured the neck pour, sort of uh, uh, nosed it, I got this overwhelming wave of this sort of quality that I associate with spirit, with like new make spirit, sharply, sharply sweet, with a sort of a, earthy, kind of almost funky kind of note underneath. It was very spirity. And when I look at my notes from having uh, nosed and tasted the neck pour on that whiskey, it is like it's a totally different whiskey. I had been sort of experimenting with this over the course of the week. I, I, I had it about three days ago. What a difference those days made. It was completely transformed. This is the committee release bottling, the 50.2% ABV, non-chill filtered, non-age statement whiskey. And we assume it has no color added because boy, is this whiskey pale in color. When you see it uh, poured in the glass next to Chardonnay, it's about the same color. And when you compare this bottle to the standard core range 10 year in the green glass bottles, you can see this one is lighter in color. So we don't have a lot of information about the casks involved in this uh, whiskey, this year's heavy vapors. We don't know if they're first fill, but just looking at it, before we even get into it, it appears to be younger than the standard 10 year. We're gonna go in neat on the nose and see what we find. And the first thing that jumps out at me it's the heavy vapors, right? The no purifier, you expect it to just come with those big flavors. The peat's muted. The smoke, and this has been consistent even since the neck pour, it's not nearly as smoky as you would expect when you're used to the normal Ardbeg core, core bottlings. It's there, but it's really, really uh, volume turned down. What I'm getting a really big wave of on the first nose is a sort of buttery, toasty biscuit. It's 50% whiskey. I mean, you, you go in, you take a big gulp of air. It, it's gonna hit you a little bit, but it, it's, it's, really, it's really not very hot for its ABV. And the other 
component here going with that that toasty buttery is garden there's a little little bit of mint garden mint like herb not like mint gum and sort of a ripe vegetable on that neck pour it was it was kind of a an old old vegetable and now it's 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 riper more welcoming certainly there's a bit of a saltiness flowing through here and the next wave down there is some fruit fruit sweet orchard fruit apple maybe a little peach there's some vanilla and there's an undercurrent down at the bottom of some settled kind of dissipated smoke but it's very mellow look at like a bit of a spice almost a cinnamon it's pretty welcoming and it's actually kind of totally inside out all of those more savory flavors salty kind of were at the bottom on that neck pour and what was really in the forefront was the sweet now the sweet's really mellowed down to a fruit sweet and it is kind of deeper down it's a little rewarding as you go down into the nose so now on the palate neat it's really not that hot on the palate ashy certainly not big and smoky still subdued sort of compared to that Ardbeg baseline a little bit of pepper honey creamy there's a chocolate sweet to it and there's also a bitter bitter coffee it's pretty nice uh, going in again uh, finish neat yeah there there on the finish you're getting that plume of the smoke for the first time really a big sort of in earnest uh, peat smoke wave and what's coming behind it is that sort of salty buttery taste and now it's really dark chocolate like the chocolate and the bitter have kind of have kind of merged together here on the finish and there is a real as it dissipates finish I would say is I mean it's, it's plenty long um, and it is you're left with a sort of a honey sweet wrapped around just just enough bitter and it's not overpowering bitter real real oaky bitter just that same sort of bitter kind of element that's been running through it just the right kind of amount offsetting some of these flavors it's here uh, as that finish dissipates I do think that that mint is still there that sort of fresh mintiness the, the 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 finish is is plenty long and it is leaving you with that sort of honey sweet kind of real wrapped around that bitter element that's been running through just enough of it kind of offsetting some of these other flavors so it's it's pretty satisfying uh, as a finish it's pretty inviting nothing really off here and I would say that there's a lot of overlap with this whiskey and so this one is probably older a little less ABV there are a lot of overlaps yeah it's it, 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 the big obvious certain notes that jump out are quite different a lot of similarities a lot of the same notes coming up when you look at your sort of tasting note lists uh, for both of these whiskeys but I would say the biggest differences between these two is one the peat is way more subdued here on the heavy vapors number two there's a lot of lemon and vanilla that I get in the 10 year that has been replaced with that chocolate and that minty sort of note that sort of runs through because it is 50% a lot of us will probably have it with water don't have a huge volume left here that should be enough water. going in on the nose with the water it's all here I'm getting that savory buttery element I'm really getting that minty element now maybe a little bit more lemony let's try the palette with the water very drinkable and a lot of the same elements I would say that sort of chocolate bitter that's kind of already blending together now with the water giving it a, a real dark chocolate even with the water it still has a pretty good texture but it has a, a I would say the new element I'm picking up here with the water is a nuttiness now let's try that finish one more time with the water overall I'd say it's very consistent with the finish neat it has that that plume of the peat smoke it is a little lessened with the water but it's still there you are getting a sort of uh, I, I think you're really left with a real honey chocolate sweet 
with that little bit of bitter. Overall, it's 50% whiskey. It's perfectly uh, fine to have some water in this whiskey. It's not gonna wash it out. So where does that leave us with the heavy vapors? This year's committee release, having not actually paid for this bottle, I, I might be a little less hung up on that price tag. Is it overpriced? It's wildly overpriced. It's $100 more than the 10 year. On its own, we have a very sort of valuable bottling that we can compare it to the normal art bags and really try to unpack and compare what this sort of element of their process uh, does to the spirit. I think this whiskey is better than just an experiment though. I, I, almost, I almost regret to inform you that this whiskey's pretty good. It's a pretty good whiskey and it certainly doesn't justify the price, but it is not, um, you know, sort of a, a whiskey that's just there for comparison's sake. This is a very uh, satisfying whiskey all on its own. It has a lot of what is good about the art bag in a sort of different variation, but what, what, what it's bringing in, these elements are, are really sort of satisfying, some savory, some uh, chocolatey elements, and I think that it is on its own in a vacuum, uh, a worthwhile whiskey, um, you know, at a price less than the Cory Vrecken or the Ugadal, but still um, uh, not just for uh, experiments for us who are taking this way too seriously to, to sort of compare with the core range hard bags that we know and love. So given the price tag offset by sort of what is unique about it. I think it's a four glass whiskey. I think this is four glasses. I'd love if you subscribe, you can use this button. It's right over here. So you don't miss any of the videos that we have coming in the future. I will see you on the next one.